Thanks, and uh, I'd like to thank everyone for your attention uh, today. I, I'm Jeff Kleiner, and uh, during my 25 years in practice, I performed a lot of TLIF operations, and, and particularly towards the end of my career, uh, our, gosh, over 95% over were using minimally invasive technique. And what I'd like to do today is uh, give you some of the uh, lessons that I learned and, and uh, actually uh, some of the other uh, uh, things that have amounted uh, uh, to this, because we've been able to uh, develop this into some really interesting and useful technology. Uh, so I think that most of us would agree that, that uh, a minimally invasive type of TLIF operation is probably the best and, and least invasive way of doing a direct uh, decompression. Um, one of the biggest issues, I think, are, are being able to, to, to graph this area uh, and being able to, to feel that you've effectively uh, accomplished what you need to, and that is to have uh, the best chance for an arthrodesis. Uh, just a quick show of hands, Did, how many people have gotten frustrated with being able to, to graft a, a T-lift? Uh, I mean, I, I, yeah, well, it looks like a number of us. Uh, there's been great evolution um, of graph materials in order to, to meet those needs. Uh, we started off with autograph and, and uh, you know, moved on to, uh, to synthetics and, uh, and uh, adjuvants like BMP. Uh, the, the, the question still remains, what, what works best? Um, I, I think that the, the, the global answer for that is you really uh, want to maximize scaffolding cells and not lose sight of the importance of, of, uh, of, of, of accomplishing just exactly that. So once again, there's, there's, uh, we're really kind of hamstrung with, with our ability uh, to, uh, to be able to, to graph the disk space, and it's because we're left with this caveman type of technology, which are these round end dispensing devices. Even the most advanced type of, of, of strategies now, some, for example, that we just saw rely on, on a, a, a round type of, of tool uh, to be able to <clears throat> apply a, a bone graft. And I'm not sure about, about you folks, but man, those conventional tools, they, they eject the graph material, particularly if you do this in, 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 uh, in the conventional T-lift type of manner, you put your graft in first, and it, it ends up being in the path of your, your fusion cage. So you have to go in with a, with, a, with a spatula, move your graft material around, or you end up with a, a, a proud a canal. And then, and then what do you do as well with the more advanced types of, of materials that do not go through these round end dispensing devices? And in, in particular, I'm talking about uh, the long fiber allograft material. And then, uh, you know, once again, the conventional type of material that we can see in the, 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 uh, uh, the lower right corner, uh, that's local bone graft, which has been uh, uh, put through a, a mill. And that's not gonna go through uh, the conventional round end dispensing device. The other thing that, that really frustrated me and kind of led to the, the development of the system that I'll talk with you about is the fact that the grafting sequence is really out of whack. You know, if you introduce your graft material first and then put in a distracting a, a type of, of uh, a device, you're, you're really the cart before the horse and you have this unintended consequence of doing the, the worst thing that you can do uh, in, in terms of achieving a fusion, and, and that is you, you underfill because you're diminishing the amount of end plate contact uh, with, uh, with graft. So what industry has done is they've, they've said, hey, well, you know, we can deliver graft through the implant. Um, and uh, and you know you, what you see is a whole lot of, of cartoons. Um, none of these really work very effectively, uh, and you have uh, you know one pinch point after the after the other uh, shown here. It's either because you've got a round end dispensing device which goes into a smaller round end dispensing device and then delivers a graft, or, or you uh, um, end up with. Uh, uh, a, a, a system which is uh, a, a pinch point internally uh, because the, uh, the, uh, the mechanism of your expandable cage uh, makes it so that it's impossible to push through uh, uh, any material at all. So you end up with a, a cartoon that works, but in reality something that, that, that doesn't. 
And what you're left with is your only option is to use kind of a toothpaste consistency type of graph material. And, and I, I've always been concerned about the, uh, the osteoconductivity of those types of materials. There's no pores for anything to grow through. And uh, so that's uh, why that, uh, uh, that picture, I think that there's a... Uh, and, and that's why you end up with that, uh, again, that toothpaste type of stuff that, uh, again, I'm, I'm suspicious of. So what this ends up leaving uh, me with, and I think uh, many of us do, that, that do TLIF operations, is this, this, this feeling of, am I, have I added enough graph material? Um, I, 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 last thing I want is a pseudarthrosis, but I'm, I'm really kind of concerned about about being secure with the amount of graft material that I've delivered, and, and this concept of graft insecurity really looms uh, really pretty high. Um, so with good end plate prep, uh, you, you've really done the job. Now the rest is up to how much graft material you can deliver, and you have one chance for success. And this concept of graft insecurity, again, looms large. Have you, have you delivered sufficient volume? Uh, do you have confidence in your grafted material? If it's that toothpaste-like material, is, is, is that going to work or is it just uh, something so you can feel like uh, you've, you've filled up a disk space with something? And then what about patient comorbidities? If you've got someone with hypothyroidism or a heavy cigarette smoker, uh, how, how, do you, how do you contend with that? Well, many of us end up uh, moving on to these adjuvants uh, with, uh, with using uh, 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 Infuse. Uh, or some other type of, of BMP. And there's challenges with that. First of all, it's, it's uh, hugely expensive. Next, you have to get a separate consent, at least you did in, in my hospital. And then you have a whole bunch of sharks circula uh, circling for uh, possible complications who are out there. So uh, it's, it's the thing that really drives us to, to use these adjuvants. Um, just to show a hands, how many MIST lift uh, uh, doctors end up using BMP when they do their, their procedure? Yeah, it looks like many of us do, and and uh, uh, one of the things that I that I learned during my literature search is about 50 percent. I think it's probably more than that, but about uh, 13 to 15 percent of of patients develop some degree of radiculitis if you use BMP, and if you don't use it, um, you have about half of that, and and it's thought to be related to that small. Uh, area uh, uh, which has, it, uh, has to deal with a, 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 a heavy concentration or a heavier concentration of BMP. So really kind of an inter uh, interesting finding. It's, it's, uh, it is not innocuous. So one of the things that, that is a way around this is to make sure that, that uh, you are able to deliver your graph material in the appropriate uh, volume. By using these round end dispensing devices, you hamstring yourself because you're not using all of your surgical real estate. And you can see that, that uh, blue um, uh, uh, dot there. Uh, that's what a round end dispensing device uh, does, a typical size being uh, a five to six millimeters in, in diameter. And yet if you, if you end up uh, using, and this is a view, the central view through a, uh, through a 22 millimeter cannula, we have a great view of the, of the disk space through the microscope. Uh, you can see that you, if by shifting to a rectangular type of, of cannula, uh, you really take advantage of all that. And what's more, you end up uh, maximizing uh, uh, the, the, the different types of graph materials that, that you can use because they'll flow through it. Uh, superimposed, you can see on the far uh, uh, right there uh, that the uh, round is a round end dispensing device uh, internal diameter versus what you have with a rectangular type of, of, uh, of a cannula. So you maximize that cross-sectional area and that will uh, greatly improve uh, your, your graph flow uh, by over 75%. So this is what we've come up with. We have a, 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 a system now which is designed as, uh, with the implant being a conduit for delivery of the graft material. Uh, it is a uh, I-beam type of construct, again, designed uh, to be a difference maker. Uh, that is coupled with a rectangular type of cannula, so there's no pinch points. In fact, it's like an upside down funnel. Things just uh, literally fall out of it. And the real uh, brilliance in the engineering here, and I have to give credit to, uh, to Greg Causey and, and, uh, and uh, uh, Alan Burkholder for being 
being able to figure out how to join two rectangles together with the result being no pinch points. So this I-beam uh, type of uh, three-dimensionally printed device has uh, no walls and an internal ramp to direct the graft material out. What's more, uh, when you do this, you are grafting in distraction. Uh, so uh, any, uh, any uh, areas that you have painstakingly prepared uh, with your end plate uh, preparation get filled with, with graft material. Uh, it, 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 this ends up being a graft agnostic type of process and procedure. And this just kind of shows you how, how it works. The implant is applied graft material, in this case the short fiber material is put through, and then the device is released. And you can see that you've got a, a system which is designed to do what uh, what we are intended to do is, uh, as uh, surgeons, and that is uh, allow the best opportunity for a biologic fusion to take place. So these are the different types of, of uh, 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 autograft and allograft materials uh, which have been used, and they all have great flow characteristics. The other thing that, uh, let's see if I can um, make this run. This is, uh, again, some of the more uh, challenging type of material, the long fiber material that ordinarily will not go through any type of, of uh, uh, cannula. And uh, let's see if I can get this to run here. Uh, so you can see even these really challenging materials uh, 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 run through, and you just, uh, again, have to be patient in pushing it through, but it works. And the bottom line is you have a, a completely encompassed uh, implant uh, a system uh, with uh, the, the uh, most modern and perhaps the, the, the uh, best osteoconductive and inductive materials that are available. Uh, so uh, this uh, is uh, the uh, surgical experience. This comes as a single patient use set, which has everything that you need to perform the, uh, the fusion. Uh, discectomy materials, of course, uh, are, uh, are, are sold separately. Uh, but uh, uh, it's ready to insert. Uh, it's pre-assembled, so there's no training for uh, any technician. Uh, it's just uh, handed, to the, handed to the doctor. And uh, this is uh, one of the doctors uh, 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 using a cortical cancellus uh, graft uh, in the operating uh, room. And you can see uh, it's a very uh, durable uh, system. You just pack it until it stops uh, packing anymore. Uh, you can then uh, remove the graft uh, cannula. This is kind of a belt and suspenders type of uh, system. Uh, and this will uh, take out any residual graft. You can use it on the next level. Uh, and now the, uh, the implant itself is released by, by reusing that plastic pliers again. Then uh, the result is uh, an uh, and, uh, implant, uh, which is entirely encompassed uh, with, uh, with graft material, as you can see with this uh, CT scan. And, and this is a typical uh, uh, picture uh, with, a, with a, a, a reasonable uh, uh, end plate preparation. So again, agnostic for graft material, doesn't matter what you use, it saves about 15 to 20 minutes of time uh, for grafting and reduces the number of, of touches. It's a single pass of an instrument, uh, amenable to open or MIS type of, uh, of technique. Uh, and uh, it, uh, 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 the first dozen cases we measured, people put in an average of 12 ml of graft material. Gosh, as hard as I tried, there was no way that I ever got 12 ml of, of uh, bone graft uh, into an MIS uh, uh, fusion case. Uh, we have uh, uh, about uh, almost a year's worth of, of, uh, of uh, surgeries now, greater than 50 cases and 10 surgeons. And, uh, Boy, it's, uh, it's really worked phenomenally well and very, very simple to use. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a presentation. I really appreciate your attention. Any questions for me? Um, well, I have one. Uh, you know, I, again, a disposable, so we talked about the issues getting into the hospital, but it looks like the cage is part of the, dis in that package, the cage comes with the graft insert. So is there, how, is that competitive, you know, uh, you know, with the cage costs? I mean, so is it, 
how much of an addition is it uh, for the graph delivery? Component? Yeah, th this is uh, this is competitive with any static type of cage. Um, we have been getting a premium because we have an associated uh, 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 inserter uh, for graph material as well. Uh, so that's, uh, but otherwise it, it is uh, absolutely competitive with other um, uh, static types of cages. And I think that, you, you know, probably the other thing that I uh, deserves to be mentioned is this is a, a, a touch-free type of technology. It never needs to be assembled and you don't need to pre-pack the cage and you don't need to pre-pack the disc space. Everything goes through the disc space. Yeah, so um, I, I spend like 10 to 15 minutes pre-packing, it seems like. Uh, at least that's my perception. Maybe it's a lot less. So. So yeah, a time efficiency, um, I, I think it's a big deal. And um, I, I use a lot of expandables, and personally, I, you know, you backfill the expandable, I always prepack, because the graph window on an expandable is really small, and then what they give you is a flowable, which is, again, like toothpaste. I'm never sure about the bone conductivity with that. Yeah, I don't either. What I always just pre-pack the disk space and then put the cage in afterwards. I don't know why we got so obsessed with post-packing the cage after we put it in. Yeah, so um, th that's what I did with static cages, but I've gotten the expandables and I'm always a little bit leery because uh, pre-pack, but then when you expand, you get some disk height. I, I was wondering if you, th you're creating a little bit of a space in between the end plate and the, and the bone. Uh, and that's why I, I would use a, I, I figure it's like toothpaste, maybe it'll fill the cavities, or but I, I'm never sure how, how, how well it works. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think um, you know for a bulleted cage, I think it's a it's a great type of uh, solution for delivering a lot of graft. Uh, I'm sure the biologics companies will be happy because they can sell more graft uh, if you're putting 12 cc's into a disk space. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, in my, my practice, I, I use an expandable banana cage for T lifts. So uh, if you're able to, depending on the patient anatomy, if you're able to position an anterior. Um, you have a lot of space where you can post pack, and um, and then you can kind of avoid some of the limitations that you mentioned, mm -hmm. with, as far as for trying to get like a long fiber through a, a narrow channel. So I, I think uh, for for a bulleted cage, people who like using bulleted cages, then I, I think this is a uh, a good solution. I have one question. Actually, the question is for you, Dr. Park, and as well for you about um, these uh, expandable cages, they have an internal mechanism. How much space do you really have to prepack it? Uh, well, uh, prepacking is just filling the disk space, but actually within the cage itself, because of the mechanism for expansion, it's very little. That's why I think it usually has to be like a toothpaste type of graph material, because there's just not much room to push anything else through. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if you're talking about a T-lift window for sure, um, you know, I, I do uh, use expandable lateral cages, so there you, you can get away with it a little bit more. Um, but again, um, for a bullet, it's it's a limitation for sure. I th I think we can move on to the live demonstration, actually.